Uh, coming to you 30 minutes earlier, guys. Uh, I have a couple of things to take care of tonight. So uh, I thought I decided to get hold of our teacher to let him know. So he's going to be running one to come join us as well. Just uh, great to see all of you, Mpo. Great to see you again, Hanno, as well. I'm very excited about this one. It's a very interesting one because it goes hand in hand with our magazine feature, our magazine this month. So we went with the TS. T20 domestic cricket and shaping T20 players in our latest issue. So go ahead and download the latest issue when you guys do have time available to do so. And that's why we chose this particular topic. Um, Aditya actually came up with this topic, and I have to give him credit for that. I think it, it falls right in line with our theme this month and about what makes a good T20 league. Now, we will get straight into the topic, but I just want to just listen hear a little bit about from you guys. Um, how your weekend was, etc. You know, we like to start this particular show like that. Um, I know, I know, Paul would be smiling with um, another three points for his team. Uh, <laughs> so, but we'll get into that. But I know we'll start with you because I love the gown, you know, um, love it. <laughs> well, I used to be a, the, the campus DJ in my young days as a varsity student. And uh, this was actually a present from one of the, I don't know, there was some some um, club goer who was particularly impressed with me, and she gave me this gown uh, imprinted with uh, my DJ name. Uh, it, it's a little bit, um, I suppose, uh, yeah, a little bit hypocritical, but, you know, I've always held the gown, and it actually has practical value. Thank you for mentioning that, and, yeah, I'm no UFner by any count, but uh, thanks for observing. <laughs> Paul, how are you doing? How's everything on your side? I'm good. Um, yes, there was a good day. Obviously, Arsenal won. And then somehow, Kaiser Chiefs got lost to that team that got bought out. Like, I just don't... I never... I was like, okay. Like, why... I can't I can't find joy in life. But, um, yeah, I played some, uh, some golf over the past two days. And that went okay. Um, and yeah, just after this, watching NFL all night until like 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, just getting myself ready. New season started, second week. Excellent. So Aditya has joined us. Um, welcome, Aditya. I've just been asking the guys what it was like, what, they, what their weekend was like. Um, if you want to fill us in. I know you had to rush down to get to the show. I know it originally was supposed to be a little later, but we've made it a little earlier. So how was your weekend before we get into the topic? The IPL is back, and how? What a game is going on right now, folks! What a game! Chennai lost four wickets in the power play. Four wickets. They were scoring at three runs and over for the first ten overs, and they ended up with a hundred and fifty-six. All thanks to a young man called Ruturaj Gaikwad. What an innings! Eighty-eight of fifty-eight. He is literally sweeping. Just being boomer as Yorkers. That is unbelievable stuff. So I am a happy man tonight. Only smiles. Excellent. Ties in straight into the topic because we want to talk about what makes a good a domestic T20 competition. We listened to a guy like uh, Michal Pretorius who spoke to us in the feature article and he, he gave us his thoughts on it. And he gave us his thoughts on what makes the a good T20 league and what he's learned from T20 leagues, actually, to become a T20 player. Uh, let's start, let's go around the room and let's get everybody's views on what makes a t good T20 league. You know, the Mzansu Super League is trying to obviously become that tournament for South Africans, um, for the South African market. So, Hanno, let's start with you, then we can go to Aditya and then we can end off with Mpo. Oh, thank you, Khalid. Look, I think when it comes to local domestic T20 leagues, uh, what does give you the leg up is if you are known to traditionally be a strong domestic league, be it in first class or whatever the case may be. So when it um, started, uh, when the IPL started itself, I think they've done very well to promote the brand IPL because there was a little bit of uncertainty in the beginning of how strong exactly the domestic Indian league is because it's such a vast territory and quickly became a brand that is now recognized, um, you know, 
to the degree that it can become an entertainment channel like the WWF became the WWE. And um, that is significant from a commercial value point of view. But um, yes, um, in saying that, um, I believe the basics should be in place with uh, any format. Um, but specifically, I think the entertainment element needs to be become part and parcel to draw uh, the gen generation X, Y, and Z and millennials along with um, having the the um, the buy-in and um, commitment from the stalwarts on quality. So quality and competitive teams is a non-negotiable and a strong domestic um, league, I think, will give you a leg up. And if you don't, then you better invest a lot. Um, and normally that would be done by investing in a lot of marquee players, but that it is expensive, of course. So... Um, mm. Um, how you combine all of that and sell that um, is normally a substantiated when you establish uh, sound global and local broadcasting partnerships. That normally is, um, um, I would I would imagine, you know, the seal uh, to the rest of the world to say, look, if Sky Sports or Super Sport or, um, you know, uh, Fox uh, um, uh, News Corp, if they subscribe into that, that normally is a, a very good confirmation. But like I've mentioned, um, uh, entertainment value for the spectators, um, it is important as well. So you need to draw in a traditional crowd and make that still credible, but also make sure that, you know, you get the normal viewing um, uh, the viewership, which may be on the fringe of cricket, but erring on the side of, hey, this is cool. A lot of cool cheerleaders dancing here and some innuendo like a Vince McMahon on WWE. I think all of that is a good mix to give you a result where you find a very good product at the end. But yeah, um, long and short of it is that we need to have good cricket. It can't just be one or two good teams. It can't just be local talent. But that has to be not at the expense of a marquee player you know, taking over the show all the time. You need to have performing local talent and the market players and uh, in a broad-based competitive system with the entertainment. And for me, that would be a great result. And I'm glad you went with the entertainment factor and the, the money factor over here because I think it will tie in nicely with what Aditya is probably going to say. But Aditya, I'm, I'm hoping that you give your insight and you can add to this where, where it's more of, on a, on a cricket standpoint, but I'm not going to uh, um, get involved with what your opinion is exactly. So just give me your thoughts on what what makes a good T20 league from your uh, from your opinion. Because I know I'm poor. Oh, I don't know. I'm I'm going to I'm going to presume that I have like telekinesis type of powers here with with poor that me and him on a similar wavelength. That he's going to talk a lot about South Africa's tournaments. I'm hoping and how we can get to that level. But Aditya, what's your thoughts? Look, a quality T20 league comes from high-quality cricket. And you can produce high-quality cricket if you've got solid players. And the only way that you can have solid players is by having a solid domestic structure. So that, to me, is are the roots of what would ultimately make a good T20 tournament. Look, ultimately... The IPL, for example, there are four foreign players, there are seven Indian players. In, in, in an entire squad of 25, there are eight foreign players and 17 Indian players. So ultimately, the the entertainment, as, as Hannah talked about, is, is driven by by the Indian players. And they have to and they have to be of a certain standard to make it to the IPL in the first place. So you look at if, if you looked at today's game, for example, the difference between the two teams was a player who's played under three international games. And this is his second season in the IPL. So obviously his quality was not a product of the IPL. His quality is a product of all the rigors that he has gone through in, in domestic cricket and all the time that he spent under Rahul Dravid in the India A setup. So that's where his game was really nurtured. And what we're seeing right now in his performances for the Chennai Super King, uh, for the Chennai Super Kings is the work that he's done in the domestic system. 
So that applies to a lot of the other Indian players who have been successful in the IPL as well. And I do think that for for any country to have a strong T20 league, they need to sort out their domestic structure first because that needs to give them the right players to succeed in those T20 leagues. Mpo, take it away. <laughs> Um, look, I think from a South African T20 perspective, um, as Khalid goes, um, it's, it's actually quite interesting because I, I was thinking, well, when the question came up in the group, I was like, okay, um, we need we need teams chasing scores of, of over 170 plus. Um, and, and you also need a lot more boundaries, but also you need to find the balance between bat and ball. And in South Africa, um, even if you look at that CSA T20 and also with the um, the, the the T20 tournament starting this weekend, um, you're going to find the ball dominating a lot more than the bat, and you want the bat to kind of equalize. You can't be, like the CSA T20, we can't be playing 140 plays, 140 or 150 plays, 150 or 160 plays, 160, which kind of tells you where the situation lies. Not a lot of boundaries, got a lot of guys who bowl really well to deny boundaries, but you don't have guys who are hitting boundaries. You need a lot of boundary hitters. Um, I do agree that you may need some international players. And for the MSL, which is going to be in February next year, that's why they moved it to February, so they could find a window where a lot of the international players are free. Um, but the thing, of, obviously, is you want to get some sort of Indian players, but I don't think you will unless if they're retired. Um, but to a certain extent, for me, I'd actually like more batting-friendly wickets. Um, I, I, As much as I like bowling and I like some good bowling i'd also want um to see the challenge that our bowlers will get from putting up batting friendly wickets like i remember two years ago i think england played before covid uh when when i think uh, in that series where timber made his debut and he opened with quinny we had at centurion and i think it was in durban um we played three t20s and um south africa and england I think in all six T20, in all three T20 matches, scored 400 runs. You want something like that. You don't, you want, you want something where the bat is a little bit more dominant. Look at the 100. It's a weird concept, but what makes it work is that they get more boundaries. They score more boundaries. So people will watch. They don't care. Like wickets, yeah, are great, fine, but it's more about the boundaries. Guys are scoring 160. Um, with a hundred balls, that is more entertaining. So for me, that's the that's what I think. Um, that's what I think we may need as South Africa more boundary hitters. Maybe change of strategy. Maybe pitches that are allowing. Um, that's what I think we would need. Uh, I think from an entertainment perspective, that's what gets people to the screens. Like today, now that we've seen a team who has four wickets down get to about hundred and sixty, and now you have. Um, an, an interesting chase. More eyes are going to be watching the IPL tomorrow to see if that's the same thing. So you kind of need something like that, which was, which is why I think MSL One had that. MSL One throughout, really competitive, really strong, um, lots of nice run chases, um, and then all of a sudden, even in the final, it was a really, really great final. Um, but all of a sudden, MSL Two. The run started like we started well with the with the with the stars and the blitz, and then after that it just fell off. Yes, obviously some teams will play on slow wickets, like in Durban as well as in Paul. But I'd like more batsman friendly wickets. You want you want runs. You want the game to fall on the bat, not on the ball. In other formats of cricket, you want a balance. Here, I think it's better to have that one side. You know, there are a couple of analysts at the hundred who were commenting on why there were so few South Africans who were selected for the tournament and mm. and why so many why so few South Africans are a part of international T20 leagues as well yes. and he commented on the boundary percentage as well as the six hitting percentage mm. I guess my question to you is that I think apart from from Abe de Villiers perhaps who we can say and almost at sixes at will. You look at some of the other players, like Faf, for example. You know, he he's able to sort of smartly rotate strike and find ways to score quickly. And that, to me, is where I think 
um, a lot of modern South African batsmen have sort of lost that art of finding different ways of, of scoring runs. You know, so so where do you think that's going wrong? You know, is it with the coaching or is it with uh, is it with players who are being too one dimensional? What's the problem there? I think it's 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 coaching and it's tactics and where we see T Twenty cricket um, in in well South African coaches see T Twenty cricket. South Africa South Africa's always bothered worried about wickets. They feel if you have wickets at the end, that should guarantee your score, and that's the way we've always played limited overs cricket over the past decade. Um, whereas I get Faf Duplessis, but Faf strikes at an 18% boundary percentage. He's no slouch. You know, the average player in the IPL should be striking at about 16. He's at 18. It, it, yes, we, we, we fell into a pattern now recently over the past year of looking for guys who can rotate strike. Yes, that's fine. That's important. Kohli does that the best in the IPL, even though he doesn't hit that, that many boundaries this season, his high, his non-boundary strike rate is really high. That's important too. However, it's also about getting those hitters. There are those guys there. Marco Marais strikes at a boundary percentage higher than 20%. So does Jacques Sneeman. Um, Yanaman Milan does that. And this is domestic and international, all combined in T20s. There are guys who can do it. It's just that we don't have those types of play. Well, we A, don't identify them for the national side because that's where you get your addition from a South African perspective. You don't get your addition from the MSR because everyone thinks our bowlers are rubbish. You you get it from an international stage and that's where the issue comes in because at the international stage, boundaries in South, for South Africa, it feels like you, you're only allowed to score boundaries in the first six overs and in the last six or seven if things are good. In the middle overs, it's about protecting wickets and rotating the strike. And so you find a situation where guys don't get recognized as much. It's good that Aiden Markham got recognized, but Aiden's boundary percentage in all his T20 games is about 14%. This year it's 20%, so that's why they picked him, and that's good. But can we get more batsmen like that? Vian Lippe hits a boundary percentage of close to 20%. He only got two games in the protest team. He actually has the stat of, being the guy with the highest strike rate ever in Mark Barcher's tenure at 160. He only faced 10 balls and he scored 16 runs um, in his two matches. So for me, A, we need to place value on different types of players in South Africa. And I think it's not your traditional guys who are in the test and the ODI side. It's actually different guys and we have them. The Stubbsies of the world. Um, Miguel Pretorius because he can hit a, a long ball. Vian Liber, Marco Murray. Um, who's the other dude? Uh, Jacques Neyman, who only got two games in the protest. Yes, he got ducks, but we need, they need to get more opportunities. Yanaman Malanza is, is important, and it's one of the reasons why I would have put him in my side as my wild card, even though his T20 performances haven't been great. It's because his T20 career, the man strikes at a boundary percentage above 20. You need guys like that. We need to honor and value guys like that. If you're not going to, then that, if you're not going to pick them and and pick guys who are going to just rotate strike and get you close, and then because this thing of this thing of no, we'll go at 14, 15 runs or 14 balls, 20 runs of 19 balls, and then all of a sudden after that we'll get to 48 of of, of 33. Those first 20 balls that you that you were going at a runner ball, that is. That's not helping the team at all. If you get out, you're putting pressure on the guys at the back and also you're putting pressure on yourself. This thing of catch-up cricket doesn't work. And that's why I think from a South African perspective, our product isn't that exciting because that's what we do. You know, it's, 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 we'll, we'll wait, we'll, we'll take our time and, and we'll score. And that's getting, that's why we're at 160. That's that's why our teams will always end up at 160. It's a it's a it's a function of what we saw at the CSA T20 and what we saw in MSL too. Um, not a lot of high scores, um, not a lot of boundary hitting, and guys who are like we were talking. I think when we when I started on this on the show, we're talking about Marco Murray. We're talking about guys like um, those those guys of that ilk. But those guys guys of that ilk aren't even getting opportunities. So we won't see them in international mm. leagues unless if somebody is a great statistician and is helping in the in the selection because that's the only way you could get some South Africans, but it's it's not great. You know what I want to see actually to improve it uh, as well is the extra two teams maybe that they add into the MSL I'm talking about now. 
Mm. Um, luckily, our T20 domestic tournament obviously is going to have extra teams now. But I want to see our MSL with extra two teams. I know maybe the, the six franchise or six team model is, has been a proven one in the past, etc. But what I would like to see in the future is an extra one because I want to see also the rookie rule being enforced a lot more in South African cricket. I would like to see maybe a rookie rule of two players, especially with the amount of domestic cricketers that have left the setup, um, older guys that have retired from the, from, the, from the setup. I would like them to put a little bit more of a, a emphasis on the rookie guys getting opportunities to play. Maybe in starting 11s that you must have at least two and one bowler, one batsman maybe. And that could be a, a possible um, way to increase the levels of competition that are in these tournaments. Plus the overseas players, obviously the more they are, the better. So if you have extra team, there's more opportunities for more overseas players to play. I want to see all of those rules increase because the, the only way our youngsters play, to learn is by learning from others. And we heard Michal Pretorius in his interview with us. And go, please go watch that exclusive interview and download the latest issue of the magazine as well because you'll get insight in there that you can't get anywhere else. It's The, the exclusive interview was supposed to give you more in-depth in uh, on, on specifics, and the article was written on that because it, it, it would um, be able to give the average consumer the idea and the summary of everything. And the way I buy it, put it together was excellent. So just go ahead and go go read the in, read the actual piece and watch the interview that coincides with that piece because he spoke a lot about what he learned from other players in the dressing room playing against other guys pressure situations the only way our youngsters are going to learn this if they're not going to get ipl contracts because we see what you need to be to be able to get an ipl contract what you have to do to be able to be noticed marco jansen is one of the exceptions to the rule i feel because it was a recommendation from someone in mumbai that actually did that i think he was an exception to the rule but aiden markram had to perform at the highest level in subcontinent conditions to prove that he is worthy of an IPL contract. Rassi van der Dissen, he was, and then now not anymore, but initially he was set, he was part of the crew and part of the setup. And um, he had to really be as good as he was to get the contract. So um, Heinrich Klaassen got selected and hardly saw a game, never even saw a game. So it was it was one of those type of things that you need to be at a certain level. The only way we're going to improve our T20 cricketers is if we give them opportunities in our own domestic competition. And we need to strengthen that. Make it stronger, get more guys involved. And I think by having an extra two teams or so, that will do that. Let's just get the, the final round of thoughts from everybody. I wanna I wanna get I know I know you you start and you have a go. Aditya, you have a go. Um or actually let's make them poor go before Aditya and Aditya, you finish it off. Um thank you, Khalid. Look, I think I I'm the kind of person who makes sure that the basics are in place when it comes to cricket. Um, you need to be famous in your own village first. In other words, strong and quality cricket doesn't happen overnight if you just buy a bunch of marquee players and throw money at it. Um, it's uh, certainly uh, going to create some type of viability issues going forward for the local talent, um, albeit you could have some short-term gains in terms of sponsorship and broadcasting deals. So I think a balance of that is very important. Um, the way that um, the the IPL has gone about it is to, um, I think, build something where the brand um, and the local domestic talent may not have been as well known beforehand, but now it's undeniably the case. And I think that model can be a best practice model going forward. There's no there's no denying how how strong that particular brand is. There's a lot of um, issues uh, and debates around uh, how that is even pushing over some other cricket interests. Um, but um, I'm saying that as a compliment. Um, the long and short of it is you need to draw in the young and the old crowd. So whether that's going to be on the fringe or entertainment and the traditional cricket lover, you need to involve all three of those. And that would entail a strong domestic uh, players seen buy-in and then the marquee players with some good buy-in from your broadcasters. Um, um, what we haven't seen before and what I probably mm, envisage will uh, add a premium to this is if we have some innuendos like with WWE before the game between coaches talking to other players, you know, like a Vince McMahon talking 
um, as the boss of IPL to, you know, the situation which is uh, now uh, being caused. You know, some innuendo, which we understand is part and parcel of entertainment. Um, it doesn't take away from the particular brand itself of quality, but I'd like to have a symbiosis between the two to create something which somebody will switch over, whether he's a cricket fan or not, and say, hey, I'm not going to switch back. This is entertaining. And for the cricket lover who likes his cricket to say, this is not a joke. It's not a rigged situation. And I like this cricket as well. So that's my two cents. Yeah, look, I think um, I actually like the whole um, uh, Vince McMahon um, have a have a have a storyline to everything. I think that that kind of puts things into context. Um, I'm, I'm, I, the rookie rules always been there in in, in, in MSL. Um, I know we kind of need two more teams, but the problem is obviously do you have do you have the quality of of South African base players who are going to line the base to give you quality cricket. If you looked at the CSA T20, I wouldn't agree. I think we're at our max at six, but we'll see how it looks with all 16 teams um, in the coming weeks to, to kind of gauge. Um, yes, two teams, uh, two additional teams. If you have a, a, inter, a base of international players to line it, to line the thing, I think we've got about 90 good cricketers in South Africa. And if you add like 30 more internationals, that gives you a one to uh, a quarter ratio and you can then have the extra two teams. But uh, right now, I don't think we have that base and we'll see it. Um, I may be proved wrong and I hope I am in the coming weeks. I'm hoping for some second division upsets um, in the CSA T20 that's coming up uh, starting this weekend, uh, because I think there are some very strong teams. Um, but I also do think there are some very bad um, division one teams and we're going to see that as well. Um, Khalid, one of your teams is was Western Province, but you've you've added a lot of a lot of a lot of of, of you bolstered up there, so that that's fine. Um, but like I look at the Knights and I'm like, ooh, that's gonna be tough. Um, and also that um, what you know, I look I look at what Robbie P has there. It's gonna be pretty tough with young guys. They're gonna get a lot of opportunities, but we we're gonna see how well they are. I think they're gonna be mid to low, and they could be the team that could get an upset from like an Easterns or something. But um, that, for me, is the thing. I just want proper pitches. We're playing in the Northern Cape. We're playing in, in Kimberley. So I'm hoping that they just give that. It just must be a road. It must be a road. Uh, it must take a little bit of spin. But actually, we don't. We want more leg spinners, more wrist spinners, and we want more boundaries. So we want that road. We want Jacques Sneeman and who's that other? Rena van Donder's um, yeah. pitch, the one he bats on. We want that. That's what that's what's gonna get you um, an interesting tournament uh, going forward because I, I like I really don't care about the bowlers in T20. We shouldn't be caring about the bowlers in T20. All we should be caring about is boundaries, and we should be caring about um, some interesting bowling like uh, wrist spinners because that makes the game more intriguing. That brings eyes to the TV screens. I hope. Well, obviously, people in on SABC, so the millions of South Africans won't be watching. But like MSL, millions did watch. Um, even though everyone thinks Super Sports like the greatest thing on earth, the fact that the MSL was on SABC, even though everyone thinks Tabang Moro screwed that up, was the best thing to ever happen to this game. It opened up to lots of other people. The only problem was CSA were unable to cash in on the fact that they had millions more people watching T20 cricket on SABC3. And that was disappointing. However, that's all we need. That's all we want. Um, and yeah, look, it's it's the the best T20 leagues in the world. There's lots of boundaries and 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 and, and lots of interesting types of bowlers that that make it that make it thing. Look at the CPL. Look at the IPL. Big Bash is still bowler friendly, so you get moments where you're like, Nah, guys, I'm not watching this. Uh, and 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 if you get some, you don't even need the best international players. You just need guys who are capable of hitting sixes, and there are guys who are not household names who can do that and do that really well. Um, and like, look at Tim David. Nobody knew who Tim David was. Now he's he's a household name. So that's all I need. Is it? Um, look, all great points made. Um, and I'm just going to add on to the fact that, 
you know, apart from um, a strong domestic system, which is integral to the quality of cricket, uh, I I would emphasize that that a part of the reason the IPL is as successful as it is is because a lot of the cricketers that are doing well are not exactly T20 specialists. Their focus is test cricket. So you look at guys like Rutraj Gaikwad or Devdath Padikal or any of the younger Indian Indian batters, as well as bowlers, they play a lot of five-day cricket. And Some they know their the games. Same. And they know their games. They know their games a lot better because of that. And that to me, that to me is certainly where the Big Bash suffers because they have this, this massive scheduling issue where the Sheffield Shield starts and then right in the middle of the Sheffield Shield, they put the Big Bash. So players who've started to gain some sort of momentum in the Sheffield Shield now have to go play the Big Bash. Then they get into some sort of momentum in the Big Bash. It gets over and then they play the Sheffield Shield again. So basically they've got they haven't got uh, their, their test batting sorted, nor have they got their T20 bat, uh, batting sorted. And I'd say the same for the bowlers as well. And um, that to me is is troubling because we haven't seen that that rise in the quality of test cricket in Australia, nor have we seen mm. their rise in the quality of T20 cricket in Australia. So that's something that they have to figure out. But what I do think that a number of T20 leagues, such as the Big Bash, or the hundred do is that there is that they market very well to to women and children because ultimately it's the parents have to have some sort of confidence that their kids can make a career out of cricket. Sunil Gavaskar said a couple of months ago that a large part of the reason that India has started producing so many fast bowlers is because parents in the rural parts of the country has started to gain some sort of confidence that no matter what, the, if if their kids are good enough, they can make a career out of cricket, even if they don't play for India, even if they just play domestic cricket or if they just play the IPL, they're still going to be paid a decent amount of money. And for South African cricket, I feel that's something that, that they could do a bit better. You know, mm. just market aggressively to, to parents because ultimately it's as much as, much as it is about talent, yeah. You know, in community-based societies, it's, it's as much about ensuring that parents are comfortable with their kids pursuing cricket as a career. Yeah, 100%. We're seeing more T20 cricket being played by school kids as well. There's a lot of emphasis on that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to download the latest issue of the magazine. The link is in the description. It's all about T20 cricket, and you'll get some excellent insight in there and some exclusive features as well. Um, also, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Click the notification bell for all future videos. Smash the like button and share with all your friends and family. Take care, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow with another daily show. Cheers.